Hey, I'm Trey, and this story is regarding serial killers that are after your children. Have you ever wondered why some seemingly normal people wake up one day, snap, and decide to kill everybody in a five block radius? Me too. I enjoy reading stories like these, and I upload every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Well, if you're ready, let's get started. In the year of 1999, in the country of Egypt, a 12-year-old boy by the name of Ahmed Nagol was a homeless petty thief that roamed the streets of Cairo. Ahmed stole in order to feed himself. Many people in the community knew him to be harmless, so they occasionally would give him food handouts so that he wouldn't starve. One evening, Ahmed was observed leaving the local police station. That was the last time he would be seen alive again. Several days later, Ahmed's body was found completely naked and lying alongside the train tracks. He was killed by blunt force trauma to the head. It was believed that the blunt force stemmed from being thrown off the roof of a moving train. He was also found to have had several puncture holes throughout his torso. An autopsy was completed and it was determined that he had been sodomized prior to being killed. It's believed that the victim had either been incapacitated somehow by the assault or had been held down by the villain during the rape. The autopsy also found that his rectum had been completely torn from massive trauma, possibly from being repeatedly raped or a device was forcibly rammed into his anal cavity. I can't emphasize enough about the severity of the anal rupture. This had been so bad that even the coroner was taken back because he had never seen anything this bad before. Several weeks later, at a nearby town of Alexandria, another 10-year-old boy whose name was not provided was found dead and completely naked, lying beside the trade tracks again. He died of blunt force trauma to the head. He had been beaten with a solid object, which also caused his eye to have been knocked out. The attacker most likely incapacitated the victim, allowing the rape to happen unopposed. The victim's rectum, again, had been severely torn, much like the previous victim. Four months after the last homicide, an 11 year old boy whose name was not provided was found naked and floating in the Nile River. The police initially thought that it was a drowning victim, but after a closer investigation, it was determined that the killer strangled him to death. Several ribs had been broken and his lung had been punctured during the assault. The victim, just like the last two victims, had also been brutally sodomized. Police didn't believe that there was a serial killer within their community until this incident took place. A serial killer? Really? What was your first clue? There was no witnesses for any of the children victims found. Four months later, an unidentified 11-year-old boy was found, killed and naked outside the town of Cairo. The body was also found near the train tracks and partially consumed by wildlife. The authorities were able to determine that the child was bludgeoned to death with a nearby stone. He had deep cuts made with a knife across his back. He was severely sodomized as well. How do you rape anyone, especially a little child? Sick. This continued to happen on a sporadic basis over the course of six years. Most of the children that were missing were runaways or homeless. By the time any leads were found, the police had a victim count of 32 murdered and every one of them had been raped in the same fashion. They were mostly killed by blunt force trauma or strangulation. Most of the children were found dumped near the train tracks or tossed into the Nile River by the villain. A few children had even been found buried alive before succumbing to the loss of oxygen. Due to the amount of missing children, the media had begun to take notice and broadcast the story to the public. Two unidentified men had been arrested for an unrelated crime. During their imprisonment, they told authorities that a gang member by the name of Ramadan Masawa was responsible for all the killings of the young children. The two unidentified teens testified about the gang members that were led by Ramadan. The first rape and kill that they had committed together was a kid by the name of Ahmed Nagal. This was the kid in the beginning of the story that was homeless and known as a thief. They wanted to punish him because they thought he was a police informant. While in fear of their own lives, the teens were forced to watch Ramadan rape, beat, and kill Ahmed and do the same with dozens of other children. One of the other league gang members by the name of Farag Mahab would assist Ramadan with all of the children's rapes. They would each take turns holding the children down and repeatedly raping each child. They would then take turns with the beatings and or the strangulations. Ramadan was given the nickname Express Train because he enjoyed raping and killing children 
that near the train lines. The noise from the passing train would assist in drowning out the children's screams as they were being sodomized. The police located both men and arrested them. During their interviews, the two men confessed to their crimes, but Ramadan told the authorities that he was possessed by an evil spirit, otherwise known as a jinn, that caused him to commit these crimes. Well, since he was possessed by a demon, he should be comfortable when he is sent to hell. The authorities believed that they were responsible for more child disappearances, but there was not enough evidence to link them. Ramadan and Farag were both charged with 32 homicides, tried and found guilty. Both pled to the court for mercy, but none was given. They were both given the death penalty and executed by hanging in 2010. If you like these type of stories, I upload every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Please feel free to hit the like button, subscribe, and notification button. God bless you and stay safe.